too much death, gore, and cannibalism? While horror movies are always bound to push the envelope one way or another, these notable mentions went way too far outside the US. It might seem strange to imagine that a country might ban World War Z, considering it's not generally notable for being shocking. But in this case, there were other forces at play. World War Z stars Brad Pitt as Jerry Lane, a former UN investigator who is caught up in a viral outbreak that turns human beings into mindless killing machines. Jerry makes it his mission to find the virus's origin before it's too late. World War Z was banned by China, a decision that limited its international box office numbers by a significant margin. Paramount submitted an alternate cut to China's censorship office, hoping it would give them a better chance. Specifically, they removed a line in the film that suggested the virus may have originated in China. As it turned out, that line had appeared in a Super Bowl ad, which meant Chinese authorities had likely spotted it. We've lost the East Coast. China's dark. The movie's chances probably weren't helped by the fact that Pitt had previously starred in Seven Years in Tibet, which depicted Tibet's struggle for autonomy from China. Despite losing a significant international market, however, the film was still a commercial success, bringing in $540 million on a $200 million budget. In some cases, internationally banning a film hurts a film's financial potential. Other times, censorship becomes a boon for its marketing. 1978's Faces of Death is arguably one of the most disturbing films ever made, a reputation the filmmakers were actively hoping to accrue. The film follows a pathologist fascinated by all the ways one can die. Its footage presents numerous grisly death scenes of both humans and animals. Some are fake, but many are real. Despite the controversy surrounding it, Faces of Death soon became a cult classic. In fact, that same controversy likely helped the film secure its status. The VHS cover of the film famously proclaimed it to be banned in 46 countries, although that number is probably fabricated. Nevertheless, the United Kingdom banned the film, as the country's laws about the distribution of so-called video nasties, mainly horror or exploitation films, are fairly strict. Australia also banned Faces of Death, citing that the violence in the film was frequent, high, and gratuitous. Faces of Death did quite well in the US, however, especially following the invention of the VHS, though several states proposed legislation to keep it away from minors. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre premiered one year after The Exorcist, and it saw similar controversy. Toby Hooper's horror masterpiece follows a group of friends in rural Texas who stumble upon a family of deranged cannibals. The most fearsome member of the family, the chainsaw-wielding Leatherface, makes it his mission to make sure no one gets out alive. Several countries banned the film, including the UK, though it subsequently received an 18th certificate there in the late 1990s. Brazil, France, Germany, Finland, Norway, Sweden, Singapore, and Iceland also banned the film, although, like the UK, they rescinded these bans at a later date. But Hooper actually wanted the film to be enjoyed by audiences of all ages. He attempted to make the film worthy of a PG rating, even limiting his use of fake blood to make this happen. Unsurprisingly, this did not work, and the film was given an R rating in the United States, though it still did gangbusters at the domestic box office. The 1970s was one of the most influential decades in American horror filmmaking. Many of the genre's classics were made in that era, and many of them caused a significant amount of controversy upon release. One of the most renowned films of the decade was The Exorcist, which seemed to anger and scare people in equal measure. I passed out in, in about the first half hour, yeah. The film wasn't banned in the United Kingdom, it was given an X rating and released without cuts. Nonetheless, several local regions banned the film from cinemas. When The Exorcist was released on video in 1981, the BBFC had no regulations in place regarding home entertainment. The Video Recordings Act of 1984 changed this, however, which meant that the film needed to be recertified for a video release. The board finally made a decision in 1988, concluding that the film should not be accessible to the public in video stores, not even with an X rating. Therefore, for 11 years, The Exorcist was effectively banned in the UK. The ban was lifted in 1999, when the film celebrated its 25th anniversary and distributors resubmitted it for approval. In 1972, horror legend Wes Craven's first film debuted in the United States. The Last House on the Left sees two teenagers, Marie and Phyllis, tortured and killed by a group of violent fugitives. The killers attempt to seek refuge in a nearby home, but fail to realize that they have just been taken in by Marie's vengeful parents. The film's distributor was aware that the British Board of Film Certification might take issue with The Last House on the Left, so they added a note to the BBFC. It read, Before submitting the film to you, we have already made considerable cuts, thereby eliminating much much of the goriness that was in the full-length version. It is not my intention to exploit the film. Despite that heartfelt plea, the film was ultimately rejected by the board, 
They did not see it as fit to release for public consumption. At the time, BBFC secretary Stephen Murphy wrote, "'If we are to go into this area of sexual violence, it will have to be for a film in which we detect greater merit than this." The distributor then wrote back to Murphy, pleading for the decision to be reversed. Still, the ban was upheld. Though it was available for a brief period on VHS, shortly thereafter the film was again deemed obscene and was seized as a video nasty. The uncut version of The Last House on the Left was only finally made available to the British public in 2008. In the filmmaking industry, New Zealand may be best known for being the shooting location of the Lord of the Rings series. However, that didn't stop the country from banning a film starring a certain famous hobbit. Are you frightened? Yes. Not nearly frightened enough. In 2013, New Zealand banned the Elijah Wood film Maniac, meaning that, outside of film festivals and DVDs, it couldn't be shown to the public. The film is a remake of the 1980 William Lustig film of the same name, which follows Frank Zito, a young serial killer who works in his family's mannequin restoration shop. The film is shot almost entirely from Frank's perspective, which is precisely why the Office of Film and Literature Classification felt it should be banned. Ant Timpson, a programmer at the New Zealand International Film Festival, explained the decision of the OFLC. He said, "...the POV nature of the film mixed with the psychopathic behavior of actor Elijah Wood is more than disturbing. It's potentially dangerous in the hands of the wrong person, that is, a non-festival goer." Neil Foley, the head of the distribution company distributing the film in Australia, stated that banning the film beyond festival screenings was an insult to the intelligence of the adult population of New Zealand. He said, "...it does little more than to serve as an open invitation to illegally pirate the film." While some horror films are banned because of high levels of violence or gore, others are because of distinct cultural issues. 2005's Land of the Dead was banned in Ukraine, though not for the reasons you might think. Directed by George A. Romero, often known as the father of the zombie film, the movie takes place in a world where most of the population has succumbed to infection, while the few survivors have built a series of feudal-like states across America. Ukraine's culture ministry banned the film upon its release, calling it not just another zombie film. Maxim Rostotsky, a member of the commission, told the press that the famine of 1933, which provoked instances of cannibalism, was still fresh in the country's history and suggested that the film hit a little too close to home for Ukrainians. He added, "...a movie with scenes of people being eaten alive should not be given the go-ahead." Hello. Do you want to play a game? The Saw films are well known for being some of the goriest and most brutal horror films out there, so it's not too surprising they wouldn't be accepted with open arms on a global scale. In fact, at least two different Saw films were banned internationally. Saw 6 faced a ban in Trinidad and Tobago, as well as Thailand. The sixth in the series continues to depict the effects of Jigsaw's game, while also focusing on the evolution of his successor, Hoffman. Meanwhile, Germany banned Saw 3D, ruling that the film should be confiscated nationwide for violating a law that concerns the glorification of violence. Saw 3D, which follows a self-help guru who has become famous after falsely claiming to be a Jigsaw survivor, was the first in the franchise to be banned in Germany, though a censored version labeled No Youth Release is available for sale in the country. Though Saw 3D was not banned in the United Kingdom, it did stir up some controversy there, too. Reportedly, the film's trailer was banned in the UK after a 10-year-old saw it on television and complained that it was distressing. The trailer had already been cleared to be shown only after 7.30 p.m., and the child saw the ad at 8.30 p.m. However, the Advertising Standards Authority concluded that this excuse was not sufficient, ruling that the ad could only be played after 9 p.m. The 1992 film Mikey depicts one of the most disturbing horror narratives possible, a murderous child. The film's titular character is a nine-year-old boy living with a foster family. When his family members are mysteriously killed, he's placed with another family, who soon discover Mikey's true nature. Inevitably, the film includes images of both children being killed and a child killing. The film was submitted to the BBFC for classification at the end of 1992, at which point it was classified as suitable for those over the age of 18. Later, they reassessed the decision, following the widely publicized murder of two-year-old James Bolger in February 1993. The board spent years deliberating about the case, and things only became more complicated with the 1994 amendment to the 1984 Video Recordings Act, which took into consideration underage viewing of home videos. Finally, after four years of deliberation, the BBFC came to a decision, declaring that they would not classify the film for a home video release. The BBFC noted that the film was likely to cause harm to a proportion of potential viewers, whose behavior might be influenced by it. Though the film's distributor could have tried for a theatrical release at this time, they chose not to do so. 